Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Research With Me. Today, I'm going to be working on trying to find some reviews so that I can start to learn this new field. If you don't know what this series is about, I'm starting a brand new research project just to film for you guys so that you can see exactly what I'm doing to be able to do my research. And last week in the video here, I chose a research topic focusing on gender, gender non-binary people, and looking at mental health and relationships. And so from that, I'm now going to move into my next step and I'm actually following the process in my 30 day research jumpstart guide. So if you haven't gotten that yet, I'll leave a link in the description below. It's completely free and it just walks you week by week what you should do in order to be able to start collecting data in 30 days. Obviously I'm doing this in like an hour a week, so that's not the path that I'm following, but that's the first step to get started. So the next thing I'm going to do is start looking for reviews so that I can really start to understand this field better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on to my computer so that you can kind of see what I'm doing here. First thing I need to do is start determining what are the keywords that I'm going to search to find these different reviews. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go both wide and I'm going to go long here. And so these two sides represent different things. So these are different topics or categories and then this is going to be different words and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start up here in the more general and i'm going to go to more specific and so this is kind of the grid that i set up whenever i'm trying to come up with my keywords so i have three main topics here so i'm going to have three columns here going across the top so the first one is on gender the second one is mental health, and the third one is relationship. So one thing that I think can mess people up is they go to Google Scholar, but they're not sure the words that they should be using, and they can actually miss really good papers because Google Scholar is really just doing keyword searches, right? Like they're not running a whole AI algorithm to say, oh, this is a synonym of this, and you might have meant this as well. They're gonna run a specific keyword search. So if you're searching too general or too specific of terms, you might not find all the papers you're looking for. So what I wanna do is start going down. So for gender, I wanna think about what are the different words that could be keywords that researchers would use. So a couple of more general terms could be like gender non-binary, transgender, gender queer, and one thing to be thinking about is the fact that you really need to know your fields to even start developing this keyword. So this is why I didn't choose a field that was way outside of my even general knowledge because it's so much harder to even develop out these keywords to start understanding what to actually search to learn the field better. And so these are kind of getting into more specific or like less used terms sometimes. These could almost be like rotatable. I think transgender might actually be a more common word that researchers would use than necessarily gender non-binary, but I think having all of those is good. So I usually like to have three to four words, and I think right now this is good. I'm going to include gender as well in this. Obviously, you keep the, the top words as well. So mental health, I also want to think about terms like anxiety terms like depression, and even I'm trying to think if there's more specific terms that people might use, or even well-being, that might actually be a term. I know that's a common term, so that might be my terms here. And then my relationships. So in this, I would almost say like, what is it, like romantic relationships? sexual relationship and then I almost do, might do like familial. So now what I can see here is now I have a lot of different terms. Instead of just going in and saying, okay, I'm going to do gender and mental health, that can re lead me to a lot of articles just comparing like what, you know, potential mental health disorders are more prevalent in male versus female, which isn't what I'm interested in here. So what now I can do is do different combinations of these. So I think the first combination I'm going to do is transgender and mental health. And that's the first one that I'm going to do to see if I can find good things with that. 
And then I'm probably going to do transgender and relationships. And I know my circles here are really bad. So I'm going to jump over to Google Scholar now. So I'm going to go to scholar.google.com. And if you don't even know how to use Google Scholar yet, check out this video up here all about how to search Google Scholar and everything about how to use it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say transgender and mental health. So that's, that's really good. That's another way that you can kind of find those keywords if you're not being able to find them is use the autofill from Google Scholar. So that was something that already autofilled up. And then once I'm here, I'm specifically gonna check this review articles over here so that I'm specifically getting review articles. So we can see this is basically LGBT communities, mental health care, needs and experiences of mental health services, an integrative review of qualitative. Okay, so I'm gonna open up this one. I think that one could be related. This one is specific to youth here. So I'm actually not going to open up that one because I'm not sure I want to go specifically in youth because I know that a lot of the data sets that I have access to are specifically in adults. So I, I want to hold off on that one. And then mental health needs of people who identify as transgender, a review of the literature. Let's do that one. Okay, I like that this has both transgender and gender nonconforming. And we can see this is 2018. That is within the last five years. What are the other ones that I did? Are they more recent or not? So I'm gonna also set my date range to, let's do 2018. Ooh, I like this one. Hormone therapy, mental health, and quality of life among transgender people. So I'm also going to look at this one. So the other thing I wanna do real quick is get a few reviews specifically using the word relationship. So this is such a bigger field than like what I'm used to being in. So there's so many more reviews out here on this. Yeah, so you can see autofill for the win. So I didn't even need to have those additional. I think if I had just used gender, I think I would have been really off, but I didn't need those additional parts of relationships, but they're still keywords and themes that I can be looking for later. So it is really helpful to go through that practice. So you can see I still have my review articles and since 2018. So this is Queer Intimacies, a new paradigm for the study of relationship diversity. I might open that one up. And then quality of life of treatment seeking transgender adults, a systematic review and meta-analysis. And so you can see it's pulling those keywords up here. So it says relationships is a part of that. I think this might be a really lacking area. The first one is on youth, and that's why I'm not pulling that one specifically. And so I'm going to pull that one as well. And so if we look at these, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to download them. And before I go and download them, I'm going to go into my downloads, and I'm going to create a new folder. And that folder is going to be on, we're just going to title it Transgender Reviews. And now I can download and I'm going to save them specifically in this folder. And so that's what I'm going to be going through. And because I'm not associated with a specific like university, I don't have access to some of these. I really am a little bit limited on the more open access ones. So I'm saving them. You're going to see I'm not changing the names of these. And that's going to be really important coming up why I don't do that. So just going to my PDFs and downloading them. I like have access to most of these. I'm like really impressed. So this one says it's accepted, but I am not getting, that one is this queer intimacies. So this guy, let me see if I can actually pull it or if it's behind a paywall. So yeah, it looks like this one is gonna be behind the paywall. So let's just download this. I wonder if my analysis tool will be able to use it. Probably not, but let's see. And then this one's open access, so I can get this one. So I'm just going to download this PDF here. Yep. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw all of these into Zotero. So before I go reading them specifically, I want to make sure that they're in Zotero so that I can always find them again. So I am going to open up my Zotero. So in my library, I can right click and say new collection. 
and this is going to be transgen. So those are my three main keywords I'm putting in here. And then I have my um, file in here and I can just highlight all of these and drop them in. So if you don't know how to use Zotero, I will leave a whole playlist up here about how to actually use Zotero and do the things that I'm doing here. And so you can see it actually did a really good job. So for all five of them, it pulled in their metadata and correctly analyzed them. So that's freaking awesome. So now why I do this before I ever start trying to read anything is now I can search. So if I'm searching transgender, you can see it's pulling those up. If I specifically search relationships, it's pulling these four have relationships in them. It now makes these searchable versus just going to Google Scholar. So, and my PDFs are already in there. So I can just double click and open up the PDF. I can, and this is like updated guys. I should do a new updated tutorial because this looks different. Sorry, but this is basically what the step that I get to before I ever read anything is I at least make sure that it's within my Zotero. Sometimes I will also put it in my Notion. But this is the step I'm going to stop at today. In next week's episode, I'm actually going to start reading these and I'll show you my strategy for how I actually read reviews. If you didn't check out last week's video about choosing your research topic, you can check out that video up here and you can check out a whole playlist on how to organize literature over here. If this content was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel to get more notifications on when I release videos to help you become a more efficient researcher. And I hope to see you in the next video.